to talk about what is going on in this world right now and why we are not to allow ourselves to be distracted by anything at this point in life. We're at a season right now, I really believe, where we really, really have to get serious about the decisions that we're making and how we're deciding to move forward. I'm going to be reading a little bit from my book, Necessary. I think I told you all a while ago, God put it on my heart at 1111. And I don't know again why he gave me that time, but at 1111 uh, that you are to be reading this and, and he's going to take it to the world. So for those of you who have your book, I want you to go ahead and pull it out. Um, I'm saying hi to everyone. Can you all hear me? <clears throat> We're going to talk about the importance of distraction. So while I'm pulling up the chapter that I want to read, let me first ask you all the question. What's been distracting you lately? What's been the thing that's been distracting you lately? Let me see some answers here. Someone says, I love you. You're awesome. Thank you, baby. What's been distracting you lately? Uh, someone says, was kind of bothered today. I'm glad you went live. It's totally the grace of God, baby, that I'm going live right now. But I got to do what God tells me to do and when he tells me to do it. What's been distracting you lately? Because this, this is a time where I want you guys to get a little bit of righteous anger built up. <clears throat> because I, I've always told you guys, and I've said this a number of times before, life is not, <clears throat> excuse me, life is not guaranteed. We're not going to be here forever, you guys. And remember I told you all a couple weeks ago when I said um, there are destinies attached to you. I don't know if you all picked up that when I laid that down. There are destinies literally attached to the decisions that you're making on a daily basis. And you may not see it, you may not feel it, you may not think it. You may just think it's kind of all about you, or you may just feel like, you know, um, it's no big deal if I keep delaying and putting this off, or Z, you, you know, you don't understand, I've kind of been trying to get this up and going and do this and that, but I don't know, things are just kind of not working out the way it is. No, 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 no. Baby, this is not, and I'm talking to me as well. This is not a time where you get to be casual about fulfilling the destiny that God has for you in your life. This is not a time to walk around casually. You can't, you can't do that. You've got people waiting on you. Some of you have children waiting on you. Some of you have communities waiting on you to show up, to show up, to be present, and to do what God has put you here to do. Remember I did a post a while ago and I said the world is waiting on you. Remember that? This is not a time to be casual, you all, especially with everything going on in this world today. And I'm talking not just the physical things going on in this world. I'm talking for those of you who know where I'm coming from. I'm talking spiritually what's going on in this world today, you guys. It's no joke right now how the enemy is after people, how he's after destinies and trying to keep people discouraged, you know, uh, having a spirit of tiredness. Anybody been tired lately? You know, having a spirit of tiredness or just kind of feeling just kind of defeated. Someone says, my family lack of support and appreciation of the sacrifices I make daily caring for my, uh-huh, for my family, uh-huh, mm-hmm. So let me go back to the question, and I'm going to be reading a little bit from my book, Necessary. What has been distracting you lately? What's been distracting you? Oh, hey, Dr. E, I see you in here. Good to see you. Good to see you. So someone says, yes, we're here. Rough morning. Thank you for coming on. What's been distracting you lately? Let me see what's going on here. Someone says, I feel defeated. Okay. I'm glad you said that because we're about to have a talk and we're going we, we're, we're to deal with that. We're going to deal with that. That spirit, just so you know, that's, that's, when I say that spirit, please don't think I'm coming at you because I, I, you know, I love everybody and I'm not putting anyone down. But that spirit of feeling defeated, do you not know that that's what's been happening to all of the people of God? Like, like the enemy, see, I, I get the pleasure that I get to talk to a lot of people. So I get to go behind the scenes, especially in my, my mentorship group and in our, my private workshops I have, I, in the podcast, of course, I get to talk to people from all around the world. And I'm telling you all, as a mouthpiece, I'm letting you know, everybody is going through some of the same things. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. Let me read a little bit from here. Someone, um, um, saying what gets distracted, someone saying being you, someone said this is so timely. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys this question again in a minute, been feeling tired and lazy as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, someone says church hurt, mm-hmm, someone says finances, uh-huh, someone says what do you mean, um, 
uh, about do not be casual. What I mean by that, baby, is that we don't just casually go into our days and just allow the enemy to do whatever he wants to do. We don't be casual about not seeking and fulfilling the purpose that God has for us. We don't be casual about just slowly walking into whatever, and maybe if it happens good, if it don't, you know, that's okay as well. What I mean is that we're indignant, that even in prayer, that we're fighting spiritual warfare, that we're, we're, we're set on doing what God has put us here to do and not allowing ourselves to be distracted. The title of this, this whole thing I just put up on here is called No More Distractions. I'm going to do a, a couple of a part series. So I just mean not allowing yourself to be distracted. Let's read a little bit from Necessary because for, I, I need to make sure I'm walking in obedience and doing what God has placed in my heart to do. So uh, let's open up your books. And for those of you who have your books, um, let's turn to the chapter that talks about If I Were Your Enemy. I want to read a little bit from that one. Now, if you all don't have your books yet, I don't know what to tell you because I've been live a number of times. Um, I just recently announced my national book club, and I even told you all for everyone who forms a book club around necessary, I'm going to join one of your book club meetings. But if you don't have your book, you need to make sure you get it. It's available on my site at unlockinggreatness.com, and it's also available on Amazon and some other places as well. But let's go to If I Were Your Enemy. I want to read a little bit from this, from this chapter. Let me see here. Where's the part about distractions? Hmm. Give me one second here. Okay, so let's go to page 243. You guys take your books out and go to page 243 real quick. I'm, I'm going to read some of these messages in just a little bit as well. Someone says, my finances, the spirit of being overwhelmed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm dealing with so much pressure happening all at once. Okay, we're about to talk about this. Let's look and see what's possibly going on. And baby, please don't think it's just you. When I get on here and talk to you all, I keep telling you guys, I speak from my own experience, right? I speak from mess that I've been through. So I mess up a lot. And when I come on here and talk, I speak from mess that I go through myself. So let's all be here together as a family. Can we do that right now? Just let's come together as a family right now. And let's just have a family talk. That's what I call it in my mentorship sessions. I call them family talks. Okay, so on, on page 243, everyone turn there in your book necessary. And I'm going to read one or two paragraphs from this and I'll stop and we'll talk a little bit. So this chapter is called If I Were Your Enemy. And this is one of the, not, not necessarily the last chapter in the book, uh, because the next chapter is called When God Says No. The next chapter deals with the loss of my son. And then the next chapter deals with the letter to the enemy part two, when I was letting the enemy know you've lost this battle against me. Uh, because the enemy really thought he had me, especially after my son died. But we're not going to get into all that right now. Let's talk to the previous chapter about uh, If I Were Your Enemy. Let me see what the affirmation is. Okay, I'm going to read the affirmation first, so I apologize. Turn to page 240. Every chapter, as you all know, starts off with an affirmation, and then it goes into the chapter. So let me read this affirmation. It's called, If I Were Your Enemy. So just think about that for a second. So if I wanted to come against you, right, this is what I would be thinking. That's what this whole chapter is about. And I'm praying to God that by the time we're done reading this and having this little quick discussion, I'm praying to God that your eyes are open and you begin to see, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. There must be something of tremendous value in my life and in the anointing and the calling God has on my life that the enemy comes at me the way that he does. But what the enemy don't know is even in my weakest moments, I'm in my strongest because of God's strength that lives in me. And even though sometimes I may be too tired to pray, and I know I ain't the only one that sometimes have felt that, right? You know, even though sometimes I feel defeated and sometimes I feel like, man, when am I going to get over this hump? What I do know is my God causes me to triumph because the victory's already mine. So let's go behind the scenes. And God really gave me this chapter in the spirit when he put it in my heart to write this chapter. So anyway, I've been talking too much. Let me read. Chapter 21, this is the affirmation, if I were your enemy. Response to negativity, that's the subtitle I gave it. You don't get to tell me that I'm going to fail. You don't get to tell me that I'm not good enough. I won't listen to you any longer. I listen to my father now. He has revealed the truth to me. I am greater than who you say I am. And despite my past failures, I will be victorious. You don't get to tell me that I will not soar. All things are possible for me because I am a child of the most high king. Now that's the affirmation that just starts the chapter. So you can kind of imagine what I was going through and feeling in that moment. 
because, oh my goodness, the enemy can come so strong, can't he? You know, with, with sort of beating you with wrongful convictions and telling you that you're going to fail. And, and in my case, he was telling me that I wasn't good enough, you know, um, telling me, you know, a lot of negative thoughts and, and, and always reminding me of my past failures and where I messed up and I should have done this differently. And you should be at this point at this at, at, at this point in life. Well, this was a point in the spirit. Thank you, God. I think I had just finished praying and God really downloaded in my spirit. OK, now it's time to write this. And this is almost like a pop to, to the enemy that wait a minute, you don't get to tell me that I'm going to fail. That's not your place. You don't have the authority. You don't have the authority to tell me that I'm going to fail. That, that's not a decision you get to make. I understand what my circumstances look like. And yeah, you're right. I made a whole lot of mistakes. And yeah, you're right. I should have done some things differently, right? Yeah, you're right. But you don't get to tell me what my destiny is going to look like. You only get to look back at my past. You don't get to tell me how I'm moving forward. That's the spirit I want you all to walk in for the rest of this day. If you don't remember nothing else from this life, especially those of you who may have to run, you, you walk in that spirit of hold on. You don't get to tell me that. You don't get to tell me that I'm not good enough. That's how you got to speak to that spirit when that spirit comes up on you. You know how you ever have, let me slow down. If you guys got to go, just go. You know how you have something that you know that God has called you to do and, and things may not line up with it, but God is calling you to walk in it, right? But then you get that little self-doubt, right? You start feeling some things. You start feeling like, well, maybe I really can't do this or maybe I really can't do that. This is when you got to come and look at, wow, let me rebuke and bind this spirit that is coming up on me that is trying to hold me back from doing what God has told me to do. That's why this chapter is called, If I Were Your Enemy. Don't you know if I was your enemy, I would not want you walking forth and doing things that God is telling you to do and writing that book and starting that program or speaking to those people or starting that ministry. Don't you know that I would work through your family members and everything that I can to get you to keep you distracted? And then I would turn around and try to have you feeling like, you know, what are people going to think and what are people going to say? Right. I would try to, this, this is how the enemy works. John 10.10 10 teaches us. Who knows John 10.10? 10? Who knows? Some, someone says, thank you, I needed this. Who knows John 10.10? 10? I'm going to see who knows this. I'm reading from my book, Necessary Baby, for those who are asking. And my name is Zendra Glass. Call me Z. Who knows what is John 10.10? 10? What does John 10.10 10 tell us? We're going to turn this into a family talk. What does John 10.10 10 tell us? Somebody tell me what John, I'm just going to sit here until somebody tell me. What is John 10.10 10 all about? The enemy comes to what? Come on, come on, Carmen. He comes to rob, kill, and destroy. He comes to rob, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. The thief is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. Have you all ever seen a thief steal from somebody who ain't got nothing? Have you ever seen someone try to steal from somebody who don't have nothing? The answer to that is probably a no, right? So there must be something, something about you. Read the book of Job. It's really powerful. Something about you that brings these, these some, someone over here said um, about her family, that the enemy uses her family to make her feel discouraged, like I'll never be able to achieve anything. The enemy can work with anybody, baby. And, and I hate to tell you this, but sometimes it could be the people who are the closest to you. It really can. It could be the ones who are the closest to you to try to discourage you, right? And why? Why try to discourage you? Because it's not even about, <clears throat> it's not even about you. Let, let me pause on this a second. And I only got to the affirmation in this book. Lord help me. It's not even about you. I think in the last chapter of this book, when I wrote a letter to the enemy part two, excuse me, that's when I realized for the first time, and it took a long time to get to this point, all this time I thought that the enemy was after me. And then I realized I really wasn't that special. The enemy really wasn't after me. He was actually after one, trying to get me to curse God, right? Trying, trying to get me to break that relationship with God by blaming God for everything. But then he's after all of the destinies that are attached to me. You get my point? When, 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 when the enemy tried to take me out with all of the pressures for my family, my finances, at that time my son was slowly dying, right? 
right? Trying to take me out where the enemy already knows on this day, what's today, the 18th or so? I don't know today's day. This lady is going to be live talking to somebody and that one person I've been trying to work through to get this one person to quit because this one person, oh, I'm feeling this in my spirit. This one person is going to be impacting destinies like millions of people. And I can't let her be on that live trying to encourage this one person that I almost got. So then the enemy comes at you years later to try to get you to avoid going down that road because he can't stop you, but he can try to get you to stop yourself. Do you all see the big picture now? I talk at in one of my mentorship sessions. For those of you who are in my mentorship group, you already know what we were talking about when we, when we did a lesson. I think it was last week on what exactly am I supposed to be doing, right? Remember one of those things in that, that little wheel that we drew? One of those things was about generation, right? Right? God thinks generationally. And so sometimes we think it's just about us. And baby, I hate to, I hate to tell you this. <laughs> I really do. Many times it has little to do with us. It has to do with the destinies that are, that are attached to us. God thinks generationally, baby. So when the enemy comes at you the way that he does, this is where you got to be able to open your eyes and say, well, wait a minute. I don't know too many people that have this much stuff coming at them at one time. So what is it? And typically in those moments, you all, I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm just, this, this is just fire coming out of me. Typically in those moments, here's what I want you to get in the habit of doing. I want you to get in the habit of thinking, and you guys should write this down. What is it that God last told me to do? What's the last major thing I was attempting to work on or do before all this trouble came into my life? Now, if you all don't get nothing else from this live and you just get that, your whole life should change. If you don't get nothing else from this live, your whole life should change from that one statement. When the enemy comes your way, baby, and tries to discourage you, you know, you just found out you lost your job. You just found out family member sick. You just found out this just happened. This person is acting funny, right? Get in the habit of training yourself in thinking. Somebody says, I literally just spoke this last night. My God, come on, baby. Get in the habit of training yourself in thinking, hold on, wait a minute. What was the last thing God told me to do that I was setting my heart and my mind to work on? What was that? Now, for some of you, you may know that answer right away, and some of you may have to think about it. Because that's when the enemy roars his head and show. If you guys only knew or only know the way the enemy tries to come at me to keep me from inspiring and encouraging other people. Uh, some of you are, are a member of my necessary retreat, right? To, 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 to keep me from moving forth with that, to keep me from the mentorship and all, all of the people all around the world who are being mentored right now, uh, uh, for those who are part of the Unlocking Greatness community. Do you think that the enemy takes pleasure in sitting back and just watching little old me do what God is telling me to do and helping people all over the world? Are you kidding me? Thank you, baby, for that. For the uh, I don't even know what that was, a heart or something. Thank you. So let me get back to reading this. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of comments coming through. Thank you so much. This was needed. I just watched the video you did on distractions back in June, two times yesterday. You're speaking directly to me. Wow, I'm glad that you saw that, Raina. I knew I put a video up on distractions. So when I woke up this morning, the first thing God placed in my heart is you're going to be uh, talking about distractions. You're going to go into talking about distractions. And I'm like, well, God, how? Like a webinar? Like, what do you want me to do? And all I kept hearing in my spirit is distractions. Too many people are distracted. I need you talking about distractions. So let's keep going. So I just read chat a little bit from the affirmation uh, from Necessary. You guys are just joining. Pull out your books. If you don't have your book Necessary, get it. Uh, you can get it on my site or pretty much anywhere at this point. Um, the audio book and the video book is available in, in different locations. So let's keep going. Let's turn over. Hmm. Mm -mm. Lord, how far do you want me to go with this? I'll read the first two paragraphs on page 242. Maybe I'll read the first three paragraphs, and then I'll turn and read one more paragraph, and we're going to go into a discussion, okay? So chapter 21, If I Were Your Enemy. Uh, and again, uh, this is me uh, when God really, in the Spirit, wrote, literally wrote this chapter for me. Uh, he was showing me almost like behind the curtains what the enemy was trying to do to me. So it says, if I were your enemy, I would encourage you to doubt your God-given talents and abilities. I would tell you that you are always behind schedule so that you would be discouraged and abandon your dreams. I would never want you to read Joshua 1.9. Someone put that in the comment section. 
someone says your book on Amazon. Yes, baby. It's on my site at unlockinggreatness.com. Uh, the autograph copies are on my site. Um, if you don't want an autograph copy, you can go straight to Amazon and grab it. Um, someone put Joshua 1.9 into the notes. Someone says necessary is necessary. Thank you, baby. And thank you all for the amazing reviews. I read them every day. To God be the glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so let me, let me, let me read this back over again. I got, a little, I got a little distracted, so let me read it again. If I were your enemy, I would encourage you to doubt your God-given talents and abilities. I would tell you that you're always behind schedule so that you would be discouraged and abandon your dreams. I would never want you to read Joshua 1.9. Mark 10, 27. Someone put that in there. And thank you, baby. Thank you, Victoria, for putting the whole, um, the whole scripture in there. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Thank you, baby. Thank you. Uh, Joshua 1, 9, Mark 10, 27. Someone write that down. Mark 10, 27. And thank you all for putting the whole scripture in there. That, that's helping a lot of people. The name of her site and book. My site is unlockinggreatness.com. Uh, uh, that's where my book is, as well as my mentorship program. Uh, which you all are more than welcome to join. Uh, and my book is called Necessary. That, that can be purchased on there as well. So write down Mark 10, 27 or Galatians 6, 9. And Galatians 6, 9 is the one that teaches you do not grow weary in doing what? I'm going to see who know this. Do not grow weary in doing. Who can put that word in there? Who can put that word in there? Galatians 6, 9. Do not grow weary. In other words, don't get tired. There, thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you, Hustle Face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Do not grow weary in doing good. Right. It teaches us that at the proper time, you will reap a what? What do you reap at the proper time? Right. Proper time. What do you reach? Somebody put that down. What do you reap at the proper time? What is Galatians 6, 9? There you go. You're going to reap a harvest at the proper time if you do not what? Give up. I would never want you to read Joshua 1, 9. Again, for those who are just joining, I'm reading from chapter 21, If I Were Your Enemy. Mark 10, 27, or Galatians 6, 9, because those scriptures would remind you to be courageous and never give up. Huh. If I were your enemy, I would do everything possible to keep you from reading and understanding Revelations 1, 6. I pray to God you guys know what Revelations 1, 6 is about. You need to know that you are king, you're a priest. Mm, my God. So someone put that in. I would never want you, if, if I were your enemy, I would do everything possible to keep you from reading and understanding Revelations 1-6. Someone put that in there. Revelations 5-10. That's another one that teaches you. That's the vision that John saw. And in that vision that John saw in Revelation, he saw us as kings and priests. You guys need to read that and learn that and learn what the heck that even means. But anyway, Revelations 5-10. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, you all should know what that one is. That's the scripture that says you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen people, people belonging to God. Once you were not a people of God, but now you are. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have. You guys can go and read it yourselves. But anyway, 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, someone put that in. Romans 8, 17, it's one of my favorite passages that reminds me that I am an heir of God. I never even knew I was an heir of God or what that even meant. That's something I didn't grow up learning. In fact, I thought it was prideful to even say such a thing, that I'm an heir of God. And no one had ever taught me that I was an heir of God and that I was a co-heir with Jesus Christ. How am I going to be a co-heir? Never knew that. So anyway, write that down. Oh, this is so good. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. Romans 8, 17. Ephesians 3, 6. Someone write that down. Ephesians 3, 6. And Galatians 3, 29. And Galatians 3.29 is that passage that teaches us, and that's a really good one that you all should know, that passage that teaches us that, that we have the same promise that was given to Abraham that we're grafted in. That's really important to know, especially when you're reading passages and you're like, oh, they weren't talking to us. The heck they were not. You're grafted in. So Galatians 3.29. Because there is no way I would want you to know anything about the power you have over me. I wouldn't want you knowing that you are an heir of God, a co-heir with Jesus Christ, Yeshua, a royal priesthood who should live in command authority as priests and kings. There is no way in the world you should know that. Now, again, for those who are just joining, 
I'm reading from uh, chapter 21 from my book, Necessary. This chapter is called, If I Were Your Enemy. I'm going to pause a second before I read a little bit more. You all really need to be thinking about this. Because you have to train yourself to be able to look in the spirit. I'm speaking to me as well. Please don't think I'm perfect. I, I go there at times where I'm like, oh my goodness, it's just too much, right? And then I have to train myself to think in the spirit. Oh, that's right. If I were my own enemy, this is what I would do. I wouldn't want this woman going live, talking to people, trying to encourage people, helping to instill hope and faith in somebody so that they can get up and do what the heck God told them to do because I don't want them knowing that God already got the provisions ready for them. So let me come after this one so this one don't even have the faith or the courage or even the strength to go live and do what God is telling her to do. Same thing with you all. Let me pause a second. For those who are just joining, I'm titling this No More Distractions, and I'm going to do a couple of parts. I might even go live later this afternoon. God's put some things in my heart. I read a little bit from my book, Necessary. Uh, many of you, I think, have already joined my book club, but uh, we'll talk about that later. What I want to know is, number one, now that your eyes are being cracked open just a little bit, can you explain to me, maybe type it in the, in, the, in, the, in the chat area, what is the one thing that you know you're supposed to be doing and the enemy has been fighting against you to get it done? What's the one thing? Because you're not on this live by mistake. You're not on this live by mistake. What's the one thing you know? Remember, remember I did a post a while ago called The World is Waiting on You. You know you know that this is something you should be doing. Someone says write a children's book. Someone says reading the Bible. Oh, someone says making movies. Someone says praying more, using art and music um, in my community, being bold and putting myself out there. In what way, baby? Be more specific. This is a sign that God's working in my life. Finish grad school. Someone says order necessary. Thank you, baby. Thank you, thank you. Someone says I'm almost done writing my book and everything under the sun has gotten in the way of my last two chapters. I'm going to talk to you for a minute on that one. Someone says working out in the gym, helping others, being in the word, no more distractions. Let me explain to you, especially um, um, you who said you're writing a book. If you were a part of my life when this was being written, what I thought would take a couple of months end up taking, what, almost three years, right? Um, because I didn't know God was going to have me live through writing the book, right? Baby, when you get down to that end part, and unfortunately for, unfortunately for me, because I didn't know how my book was going to end, um, I didn't know in those latter two chapters my son was going to die. I won't go into all of that right now. But baby, when you are coming to the brink of fulfilling what God has for you, you have so many distractions and things come your way because you got to understand in the spirit. Now, if, I, if that weirds you out when I say in the spirit, I want you to read Ephesians 6, uh, starting in verse 10 or so, because you need to understand that, there, that, that, that the battle is in the spirit. We come against the rulers, authorities, the principalities of this dark world, right? Battle is actually not in the flesh. So you have to understand, especially if your book is good and you know you're writing what God told you to write because you're going to be helping other people, the enemy is only doing what he's supposed to be doing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to reading some of these comments in a minute, but I want to make sure the one writing this book is getting this. The enemy is only doing what he's supposed to be doing, which is showing up. The enemy really is not that creative. He really is not that creative. He tends to do the same thing to the same people in the same kind of way. So look at that. Every time those distractions and things come your way, I teach in my mentorship, adjust your spiritual goggles. Adjust your eyes a little bit to look at it differently. Like, oh, now I get it. Now I get why all of a sudden my finances got tight. Now I get why all of a sudden, you know, my significant other is acting kind of funny. Now I get why all of a sudden this person I thought was in my corner has betrayed me. Now I get it. It's supposed to happen. And then you look at the situation. I know this sounds weird, but this is the way that I teach it. And this is the way I've learned it. You look at it with amazement. I know I probably lost you on that. You look at it, baby, with amazement. Now when the enemy comes your way, 
especially for those of you who are going through situations in relationships or in finances or whatever, and you've been sitting there crying and feeling whatever. No, 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 no. Now you're going to look at it with amazement. You say, well, see, how do I look at it with amazement? You look at it with a smile on your face because you're like, oh, now I see the enemy's been revealed. It's kind of sad that this had to happen, but you're only showing me that I'm on the right track. So the opposition then becomes your confirmation. I'm going to say that one more time. When you get to a point, and it takes going through a lot to get their baby. I'm well into my 50s. I'll be 60 pretty soon in the next couple of years, right? When you get to a point where you don't been through so much, <laughs> right? You get to a point, and, and, and you're growing in your walk with God. You get to a point where when that opposition comes, it becomes a confirmation. Because you've risen to another level in the spirit, and I know I may have lost some of you all by saying that. You've risen to another level in the spirit because now you're working. And I taught this the other day in my mentorship session. Now you're working in partnership with God. When you're in partnership with God, the same spirits that are the enemies of God now got a problem with you. Boom, that's good. The same spirits that's got a problem with your father. And now you are attached, trying to work in partnership, trying to do something right. What does the Bible teach you? You don't need to be alarmed that such things are coming to you now. Because now you're on that radar. You're on that radar, baby. But here's the hope. Here's the hope. You already are victorious because the battle's already been won. So the only thing the enemy can do is try to get you to stop yourself. Let me read some of these comments. I'm going to read another chapter from here. By the way, um, I told you all the other day that today would be the last day that you all can get into the Unlocking Greatness community uh, to join the uh, necessary retreat. There's a whole retreat, a 12-week retreat based on this. Let me rephrase that. That's not true what I just said. I said that uh, today would be the last day that you can get in at that introductory rate uh, to join the necessary retreat. It's like a 12-week retreat. So imagine being with me for 12 weeks. Lord have mercy. But anyway, it's a 12-week retreat that I have. Um, the person I was supposed to come in today <laughs> um, to basically shut it down and restructure it so that the retreat is back sold separately, which is how it used to be. She's actually not feeling well and didn't come in today. And I says, well, God, I guess that's your way of showing me that I need to keep this gate open a little bit longer. So you still can get inside of the entire mental program at that same introductory rate and it includes the retreat by the way you still can do that today and now if she comes in tomorrow I may have a change if she's still not feeling well tomorrow and she don't come in the Monday then you may have two three more days but I just want to bring this up to say I don't want anyone to contact me once we do put the rates back where it, it, it is and say Z can you can you get it back down to that you know that that lower rate you had before I'm going to say you have plenty of opportunity. So you guys can go to unlockinggreatness.com and sign up for um, uh, the Unlocking Greatness community. And I'll be seeing you on my live Zoom calls and workshops so I can get to meet you. And you'll have full access to the retreat. At least as of today, it's still open um, as a part of the, the membership. So anyway, let me read a little bit more in here. So I'm on page 242 from my book, Necessary. And we're talking about no more distractions. And now I'm going to read one more paragraph here, one or two, and then I'm going to close it out. If I were your enemy, this is chapter 21. If I were your enemy, I would keep you stuck in the past and constantly remind you of how everyone wronged you so that you could never fully embrace the love of God or move forward in life. And I would never, ever show you Jeremiah 29, 11. You all know that passage is for you know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you. I would never show you Jeremiah 29, 11. Someone write that down, please. Jeremiah 29, 11. Because I wouldn't want you knowing that despite what happened, God has plans to prosper you. This way you would remain living in the past instead of thriving in the future. That would make me very happy. Now, did you all catch that? Oh, I didn't know you were in here, Mike. I just love you, Mike. And the salvation of my family just keep learning and growing and being used for God. Love, 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 love. Love having you um, with us, uh, Mike. Okay, someone put the price in there said it's only $27. Yeah, that, that's, what I, that's why I mentioned it. And once I put my retreat back to where it's supposed to be, which is $497, um, it's actually supposed to be higher than that. I don't want to hear anybody say, Z, what happened to that $27 price? I'm just going to ignore you. I'm going to say you had plenty of time. You had about five or six weeks. Okay, 
Uh, I just read in here, if I were your enemy, I would keep you stuck in the past and constantly remind you of how everyone wronged you so that you can never fully embrace the love of God and move forward in life. That's one of the techniques the enemy uses, you guys. Keeping us stuck in the past, keeping us stuck on what happened, what somebody didn't do, right? We can't change them. L let me just save you some time. I actually tried. I tried for years to change people, and I, I, I didn't realize I couldn't change. I couldn't change them, rather. I didn't realize I was the one that got to change, and I get to change the atmosphere. Let me stop a minute on that. I'm trying not to turn this into a whole mentorship session, but let me just roll with this a moment because we just had a session the other day, and we got to talking about marriage and relationships, and, and I went into this a little bit further. But let me just give you the brief little piece of that. I never knew that if I change, the atmosphere has to change and adjust to me, the new me. Let's say that again. I didn't know that I get to change. I get to elevate and go higher. Not only in my walk with God and my mindset, I didn't understand, nobody ever taught me this. I get to change the atmosphere. I get to set healthy boundaries in my life. You all saw the post I put up yesterday or the day before about healthy boundaries. And I put up a post saying, you're not responsible for people's response to the healthy boundaries you put in your life. I used to feel bad for having, doesn't that sound ridiculous? I used to feel bad for having healthy boundaries in my life because it would upset some other people. Instead of thinking about myself, I would, I would worry about how they're going to respond. You're not responsible for how someone responds to the boundaries you put in your life. So I didn't know that I get to go up higher. And I used to think, if you read uh, chapter, I'm not going to go into it because you guys will keep me on this live forever. If you read the chapter called, I don't know, was it called Through the Fire or Seek God First, either chapter three or four, you'll know I had a big problem with that because I thought, I thought going to God, seeking his presence, being in prayer, working on me, right? Not cussing this person out, which I used to cuss some people out back in the day. You guys know this version of me, but you don't know that lion version of me that always used to defend people, defend the underdog. I would fight in a minute and go off on somebody because I, I never liked seeing people treat other people badly. So I would get my butt in fights and mess I ain't had no business being into, but that's a whole nother subject. That's how God made me to just be a warrior. But anywho, I didn't know that going to God and, 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 and figuring out who the heck I am, which, which is, let me deviate a second. Anyone that's in the retreat program or considering joining the Necessary Retreat, my 12-week program, that's why the whole first three weeks is focused on who the heck are you? Do you even really know who you are? And I don't mean, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, no, 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 no. It's beyond the physical. Who the heck are you? Who does God say you are? What are you even supposed to be doing? Why are you here? Right? So I didn't know no one ever taught me that going to God and seeking his presence, that that was the ultimate thing I needed to be focused on because I thought the ultimate thing I needed to be focused on, hence we're reading the chapter called If I Were Your Enemy, I thought it was the stuff outside of me. Now if I end this live just right here, things should change for the rest of your day and hopefully for the rest of your life. I thought the outside had to change first, right, in order for me to have peace, enjoyment of life, and even in order for me to prosper. Someone said, this woman is the very best blessing to you. Thank you, Sandy. You guys pick up what I just said, because I'm going to say it again. I thought I can't have peace in my life or even prosper. I had no money at the time, right? And I was going through a very bad situation in my marriage. We were hanging about half of, half of a half of a thread, right? Oh, I won't even go into all of that now. I went into it pretty deep the other day. But I thought the outside is what needed to change. And I was so frustrated because I kept trying to change what was on the outside, trying to get my kids, now they're all adults now, trying to get them to act right. Can you just go to school for a couple of days without somebody calling me from the school, right? Can, can the finances be okay for a little while without something happening, right? I thought everything on the outside was the problem. And if people would just act right, <laughs> right, leave me alone, right? If, if my money would just stay stable and if this would just, you see what I'm saying? If these pockets would just do what it's supposed to be doing, then, woo, I finally get to now pray and peace, be happy, and actually begin to prosper, thrive, and enjoy life. 
And see, that's why I read this chapter about if I were your enemy. Because what I just read to you all is that if I were your enemy, I would keep you stuck in the past and constantly remind you of how everyone wronged you so that you could never fully embrace the love of God or move forth in life. I would never show you Jeremiah 29, 11, because I wouldn't want you knowing that despite what happened or what's happening, let me say that, God has plans to prosper you. This way you would remain living in the past instead of thriving in the future. That would make me very happy. I'm so glad God put that in my spirit to write it because I didn't realize that I was being tricked by the enemy. So I didn't know that the atmosphere had to change and adjust to the new me. That's what changed my marriage around tremendously, if I can be honest with you. It wasn't the counseling. We saw so many counselors, whatever. It wasn't the cussing each other out. It wasn't none of that. All the arguments and mess, it wasn't none of that. I mean, it helped, you know, don't get me wrong. We got with people and whatever, but it was like, whoa, let me put the focus on me. And the whole atmosphere had to adjust to this new higher level of me. I'm telling you, baby, I saw it as weak as all get out. I thought it was passive. And if you read chapter three and four, which I'm not going to go over today, when we start having our book club meetings, um, we'll go more into detail with that. But anyway, you'll, you'll know the story I tell about this one lady, Virginia, who I'm, I'm a good friend with her now, but she's the author of several amazing books. But anyway, when she invited me to one of these Bible discussion sessions years ago, many years ago, you'll know that I said after I left that first, um, uh, it's called spiritual discovery, but after I left that first session with her, you'll know that I told her that I wasn't coming back. And that's the honest God truth. I said, I'm not, I said, you know, I thank you for your time because I don't bite my tongue just so you guys know. I said, but uh, I won't be coming back to this. And she said, oh, well, why not? I said, because these women are too weak for me. I'm being honest. I had her as a guest on my podcast and also had her guest inside of my mentorship program. I have guest speakers come in. I recently had her as a guest speaker as well. And uh, we laugh about it now. And she says, no, she's telling the truth. She looked right at me and she said, these, these, you guys are too weak because I saw it as weakness. I'm like, you mean telling me you got all these people coming together. And we praying and diving deep in the scriptures and learning to hear from the Holy Spirit and walking in power and all this and that. I'm like, girl, this is too weak for me. I'm sorry. My life is upside down. Things are out of control. It, I'm trying my best to even keep my head above water. And, 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 and you talking about sitting still. What the heck is that going to do for me in this moment? And I saw it as weakness. I thought that meant I was just going to get walked over and trampled over. And I had no idea. Thank you, God. Oh, Lord, I feel your spirit. Help your babies. <laughs> oh, thank you for delivering me. <sighs> Please help your babies. Please help your babies. I had no idea that that's where the power was. I thought that looked in incredibly weak. And I'm sitting here with a master's degree, running my company, got my nice home, life falling completely apart, but nobody knew it. Because on the outside, you guys know how we do it. On the outside, everything just looked good, right? I, I saw that it's just so weak. I mean, I love God, don't get me wrong. And I was still going to church, but I just saw it as so weak. Right. And, and, and it's like, what do you mean? Just work on me like this person need to change their attitude or they need to change the way. And I didn't realize I got to elevate. I wish I could spend some more time on that one with you guys. For those of you who are members of the Unlocking Greatness community, you already know, because we have our private our workshop sessions and we go deeper into this. But let, is this helping anyone? Let me read some comments here. I'm going to read one more paragraph and I'm going to close my butt out of this line. Oh my God, this woman has blessed me so much, literally wing myself off antidepressants and focus on God. Oh, Keisha, you're going to get me crying, baby. To God be the glory. We put on the clothes and makeup and behind and, and hide behind our representatives. Yeah, we love you, Zendra. Truly a woman of God. Thank you, baby. I'm just doing my best to spill my mess and I pray it helps somebody. Um, someone said I'm, I'm having a, a hard time going back to church. Church is real. Carmen, I'm going to tell you this because um, I don't get to tell you what churches to go to and all of that. You guys know, I, I, hey, I don't force 
anything on anybody other than I just talked to you about my walk with God. This is why it's so important that you guys get yourselves into a good community, a good um if you can't find a good local church organization, which I highly recommend, I don't, I don't care what kind of mentoring or coaching you get. Nothing in the world, at least to me, trumps the word of God. I'm just going to say it. No coach is better than that. So that's, 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 that's the main thing. But in addition to that, get yourself into a good mentorship program. That's why God had me lower my, my, my price down to next to nothing. He said, it's time to lift the gates because a lot of people can't afford coaching and I need to get them in here. And that gate's been lifted a couple weeks now. So I, I told you guys earlier when that price changes back and I, and I put my retreat back to where it's supposed to be, which is $4.97, I don't want to hear from one person saying anything about, Z, I can't get it in it or what have you. I'm going to say, nope, you could have been grandfathered in if you would have got in when it was just $27. But I walked in obedience. Now, what you guys don't know is I lost a ton of money doing that. Actually, I wouldn't even go into that. I don't think it's necessary for me to say that. That's between God and I. But I walked and did what he told me to do so that other people can be able to come in and get the help that they need. So what I'll say, um, especially because a number of people have said church, church, at, at, the very, at, 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 at the very least, get yourself into, if you can't find a good church, a good organization, get yourself into a good mentorship or coaching program or community. Um, and I, you don't have to join mine. Mine is Unlocking Greatness. It's, it's available at unlockinggreatness.com. I love it. Oh my God, it's the best people in the universe from all around the world. We, we meet pretty much every week, uh, every other week for personal development and every other Wednesday for business development. But if you get yourself in one, please, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, get in one that also is based on Bible-based and mindset principles. That's what mine is based on. Mindset principles, you're going to learn a lot about business. You're going to learn a lot about, you know, your walk with God, your personal development. But I always reference something in the Bible, just kind of like how I did now. Find yourself a good coach or mentor that's going to give you both sides. Because here's my personal convictions, and I'm not coming against any coach. I actually have a lot of coaches in my program. I think especially now with what's going on in this world, both are needed. You can, you can take up, you can get business mentorship almost anywhere now, just about everybody's offering coaching on something, right? But I think especially what's happening in this world right now, if you don't understand biblical principles, biblical patterns, if you don't understand how do I relate this scripture to my life, relate this to my business, how, how do I bring God into this? In my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, that's a dangerous place to be. So I would say to you all, especially the ones that keep saying church hurt or what have you, if you're still not comfortable finding a local church or organization, which I pray to God you do, that's important, a sense of community. Get yourself into a good program. Mine is wide open. The gates are open. Um, and mine is at unlockinggreatness.com. Uh, for those of you who do decide to join, when you go in there, make sure there's a couple things you need to do right away. Introduce yourself into the community. I'm in the community several times a day meeting new people, talking to new people, welcoming you, answering questions and all of that. Make sure you are as VP for the live workshops. Every other Monday we have personal development workshops where I get to meet you and we all get to talk as a group. Um, and every other Wednesday, uh, the entrepreneurs, for those who get that particular plan, we meet every Wednesday, every other Wednesday and we talk and, and that's just on fire where we go into a lot of business concepts and things. But get yourself into a good program, um, introduce yourself into the community and make sure you start on the necessary retreat right away. That's a 12-week program, and that retreat is going to walk you through the first couple of weeks is who in the world am I? God, who do you say I am? What am I supposed to even be doing? How do I even begin to dream again? Because most people don't even know the first thing about what makes them happy without naming people, right? Because it's normally based around your kids or whatever, right? That the, the second set of three weeks inside of that retreat is all on letting go. How do I let go, and what do I need to let go as I go into this new level? right as I'm climbing this mountain you're gonna find that you gotta let some of those rocks out of your backpack as you're climbing and that's probably gonna be the hardest three weeks for you but but it's needed it's necessary I should say that no pun intended third three weeks is on um, uh, preparation you know getting yourself prepared for that new territory you're walking into right and if you're in business it's gonna be getting your automation set up your systems your what have you getting prepared for the opposition that's big and then that fourth set of three weeks is on mastery and by God's grace, that's the focus for this whole year. It is my prayer, whoever becomes a member of the Unlocking Greatness community, whoever goes on the necessary retreat, it's my prayer 
that you walk in mastery. That by the time you've gone through all of those 12 uh, or so modules, and each module has several videos, workshop, mindset exercises, and all that, that you truly feel that you're able to walk in mastery in that particular area of your life. So anyway, that's my response to you, baby, is that if you can't find yourself a good community church, local organization that offers some sort of free on-site counseling and services, get yourself into a good uh, mentorship or coaching community, but please make sure that it offers some sort of biblical principles along with it because I personally think it's, it's necessary. I'm going to read a few more comments, one last paragraph, and close out in about the next uh, five, ten minutes. My site is unlockinggreatness.com. The link is in my bio. Um, and someone says, I've been looking for mentor. Well, baby, you're welcome to join. Uh, today, I was supposed to have been detaching the retreat from that $27 plan, and the person that does that for me um, she wasn't feeling well and didn't show up today. And I says, well, God, you got a sense of humor. You, you obviously want me to keep it open another day or so. So at least for today, it's going to be open again. Um, how do I catch up in the classes? All of the classes are, are recorded and saved. So if you miss any of the live workshops, if you're already a member of the community, log into your library and just click on uh, courses and training resources, and you'll see all the recordings there from any live you miss. Uh, Deborah says this community is so inspiring and loving humble and in my opinion spiritually driven thank you deborah i do love it I, I just love it i love the messages people putting in there i love how you guys are building each other up i love how when somebody asks a question everybody kind of jumps in there to help so thank you deborah for saying that i appreciate it um okay let me read one last paragraph and i'm going to close on out uh so open your books back up necessary page 243 ah <sighs> my goodness and if I'm able to, I'll try to go live later this afternoon. Um, it was placed in my heart to go live twice, so I'm going to do my best to walk in obedience. I don't know the exact time, but just you'll find out. Um, page 243, let's read one more part of If I Were Your Enemy. That's a long chapter, but I'm just reading a little bit. If I were your enemy, I would send people to irritate you and create distractions whenever you are about to do what God has told you to do. Now, that's interesting. I would make you feel guilty when you try to work on improving yourself. This way, you will remain undisciplined and never stay focused long enough to reach your goals. Now, for those who are just joining me, I'm reading from my book, Necessary. This chapter is called, If I Were Your Enemy. Let me read that again. If I were your enemy, I would send some people to irritate you and create distractions whenever you are about to do what God told you to do. I would make you feel guilty when you try to work on improving yourself. This way you will remain undisciplined and never stay focused long enough to reach your goals. I would like that because nothing of great magnitude would ever get done. And then, listen to this, and then you can get angry with God about it or perhaps place the blame on others. I would never want you reading Proverbs 4, 25 through 27. Someone write that down. Proverbs 24, 25 through 27. And Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Someone write that down. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. So I would never want you reading those passages because I would want to benefit from your distractions. And that's what I'm calling this live post. This is all about distractions. I want today, I want to see you guys type in the comment sections, no more distractions. Someone says, how do I continue to pay the same rate even after you change it on the site? Your rate won't change, baby. Anybody that's already locked in there before, you guys are grandfathered in and just know you got the deal of a lifetime. Um, but nothing's changing for you all. Anyone that's already a member, um, uh, the rates are not going to change. You're going to keep having access to the retreat and everything. That was just a little bit of a promotional rate I did because uh, God placed it on my heart. I need to lift the gates and let, allow people in who normally can't afford coach. Coaching is expensive, as you guys know, thousands and thousands of dollars for just a half decent coach. Um, but God just put in my spirit and I walked in obedience and did it. So nothing's going to change for you if you're already a member in there. Um, nothing's going up. You're just going to keep having the same... Um, the same rate. I want you guys to type in no more distractions. No more distractions. Who's making a commitment today that you know what? I'm not going to be distracted anymore. No more distractions is what I want to see. I'm seeing that coming through now. No more distractions. Thank you, Jesus. No more distractions. I am going to turn this into 
maybe a three-part series. Let's call this one part one, okay? I'm going to try to go live a little bit later this afternoon. Um, you know, it was placed in my heart to go live for a couple days in a row just talking about no more distractions. So we're going to call this a part one. And later this afternoon, I'll probably just do a recap, right? Because I know not everybody's on the live at the same time. And if it's God's will, then uh, tomorrow and in or the next day, um, I'll go live and we're going to do a part two and a part three. So now that you're typing in no more distractions, um, um, I'm trying to read some of these comments. Now that you're typing in no more distractions, my question is, so what decision are you making today? What are you going to be doing to make sure there's no more distractions in your life? What are you going to do? Some of you all need to be making decisions. I'm going to find myself a good community to join, a good church to join, a good mentorship program, whatever it is. But I'm going to, I'm going to get some, some kind of way I'm going to put myself in a situation where I'm sort of held accountable. That's another thing inside of my, my coaching platform. We have a section called Hold Me Accountable. Don't put anything in there if you don't want to be held accountable for it. I can tell you that now. And that's where you get to put in, okay, this week, this is what I'm committing to do. I not only follow up with you, but community members will follow up and say, hey, Sarah, how is it going? Did you finish that last chapter in the book? But get yourself into a situation where you can be held accountable, okay? So for those who type no more distractions, what decisions are you going to make? Are you going to finish that book? How are you going to respond when the distractions come later on today or tomorrow or the next day? How are you going to look at it differently? So that's what I want to see now. What are you, it's one thing to say it, right? Right? But now what are you going to do when that next distraction comes your way? What are you going to do? I'm going to look into your mentorship program. You're welcome to join, baby. You're welcome to join. Uh, Mary says, I'm going to order the book. Thank you, baby. It, it's available on unlockinggreatness.com. The autograph copies are as well as the audio book, but the, um, the paperback, um, it's on my site as well as an autograph copy, but um, you also can order directly from Amazon, but those are not autographed. Um, Dr. Um, Dr. E uh, says, I'm honored to be a part of this Unlocking Greatness community, so necessary. Welcome, I'm so glad that you joined us. We love having you in there. We love, love, love having you in there. So. I'm going to look into your mentorship program. You're so welcome to get in there. Um, put in the work and stay grounded. Yes, tell the enemy to leave me alone. Let me take it a step further. Because we don't need to ask the enemy to leave us alone. You actually get the command. The Bible teaches us. I think, it is it James 4, 14? I wasn't planning on turning to it. Um, the enemy must flee from us. He has to flee when you resist him. So you don't have to make a request. You stand as an heir of God as a co-heir with Jesus Christ, you actually get to, you, you uh, James 4, verse um, 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you don't have to ask. You get to command and stand in authority. Does that make sense? So I thank you for saying that, baby. I thank you. Focus on the word. Take notes and journal. Yes, stay focused on what I mu must do. Someone says, I'm going to finish my proposal for the summer program. I want to start for autistic children. Oh, my God, how amazing is that? You would love the business community that I have. When you do come into the Unlocking Greatness community, we have a section for personal development, and that's for people that want nothing to do with entrepreneurship. They just want to grow in some area. But then there's another section for entrepreneurs, and we meet every other Wednesday, and it's all entrepreneurs coming together. You would love that if you're thinking about starting up uh, your business. Um, someone says, I lost you. Oh, I'm sorry. My Bible probably was on the mic. No audio. I'm trying to find my purpose and my gift. I pray that you get that figured out, baby. If you are, I don't recognize your name, but if you are part of the retreat, make sure you review the lessons from chapter one, two, and three, because that's mainly what that's about. All right. I love you all. I'm joining the mentorship today. Make sure you introduce yourself in the community so I can meet you and um, uh, be able to go back and forth with you and make sure when you go into community, RSVP um, for the next live workshop because I like to meet all new members and sometimes when the workshop is over I stay for what's called an after set just so we can talk a little bit and I can get to know you. All right. I love you guys. I'm going to try to go live a little bit later this afternoon. I always admire your compassion for God and how you deliver the word. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. I'm just sharing my mess. I'm just sharing my mess. So I want you all to commit to no more distractions. We don't have time for it anymore. 
I personally feel, and I'm not saying you are, I'm just saying this for myself because I'll be 60 in a few years. I'm too old to be walking around being distracted. I, I want to use all this little time that God has given me. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I can't allow the distractions to come in my life. One of the things that you're, you're going to learn, one of the challenges that you'll learn as a part of the Unlocking Greatness community is um, uh, really winging yourself off from being on so much social media. You know, you don't have to. I'm just making a point. Get get in the habit of setting an alarm or something or setting um, a, a limit so that you're not on it all day getting yourself distracted. And I appreciate you guys are on for this kind of a live, but don't allow yourself to be so consumed. Remember back in the day when we were younger? When, well, some of you guys won't remember this. I just thought not many people were in their late 50s or 60s. But remember back in the day when we were younger how the television used to turn itself off? Remember like gun smoke and the big valley and all that? And then right after the news go off, the TV would go off and it would just be buzzing, right? Some of y'all don't know even what, what I'm talking about. Well, the TV don't turn itself off anymore. So you have to be disciplined enough to back away from it. Now, I can count on my hand the amount of shows that I've watched in the past year or two because I'm just not into television and, and I definitely don't turn my radio on. But I do have some family members that love TV and they love watching it all day and all night, right? But the television don't turn itself off like it used to. I noticed that. It just keeps going. And you used to be able to have a break right at around 10 or 10.30 and the whole nation had to take their butts to bed. So you have to be disciplined when you're saying no more distractions. That's part of what you got to learn is what, what, is what do I need to do a change in my life so that I can be focused, so I can be focused. Someone says, wow, Z, I remember that so well. See, Dr. E, you with me, right? When the TV used to turn, the, my grandpa practically raised me because my mom had me at an extremely young age. I won't even go into that one. Lord, won't even go into that one. Um, I'll just say, but my grandpa, uh, who was a preacher and a farmer, uh, he raised me. So I just remember all the nights of sitting on the couch uh, next to grandpa. And when the TV go off, we just went on up and got on in the bed. But anyway, um, I love you all. I love you. I pray this has been helpful. Um, for those of you who, who have just joined the Unlocking Greatness community, uh, go ahead and um, make sure you introduce yourself in there so I can meet you. Um, but I got to get off of here. I love you guys. I think I got to move some piece over because this live is about to end on purpose. All right. Love you guys. I, I'll try my best to um, go live a little bit later if it's God's will. And again, for those of you who are considering joining the Unlocking Greatness community, just to be clear, once we do remove that retreat and make it its own separate thing, there's really little I can do. So take advantage of the fact that it's a part of the memberships now and take advantage of that introductory. Um, for the book club, someone asked me about that. Um, I am getting ready to start setting out the schedule for when we're going to be having our book club meeting. So if you haven't registered, make sure you do that. Um, if you are already a member of the Unlocking Greatness community, whether you're part of the uh, mentorship program, going through the necessary retreat, there is nothing you need to do. Do not do anything because you guys are automatically in the book club. And when I post the link, you know, for when we're doing our readings and what have you, you guys are automatically going to be getting the emails and getting it inside of the community. So there's nothing that you need to do. But for those um, who are not a part of anything, um, they just need to know they'll be waiting on that. All right. I love you guys. Someone says, I remember when the Star Spangled Banner would play at the end. That's right, Agent. You're right. You're right. I remember that. All right. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Love you guys. I pray you've been encouraged. I pray you guys have been encouraged. I love you. Bye-bye. Okay, hang on one second here. Let me get this set. All righty, I got to go. I love you guys. I joined the community and I, and I need to say hi to the community. I will go in there in just a little bit so that I can um, go back and forth with you in there. Make sure if you have any questions, you, you reach out to my support. And uh, make sure you RSVP for our next live workshop. And I might squeeze another workshop in there just to meet more of the recent members that just joined um, because we're a very close, tight-knit community. Um, and so just to make sure you're taken care of. But I'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye. All righty, you guys. Hey, Mike, I'm so glad to see you in here. Mike, you know I just love every time I see when you're in one of the, the programs. Uh, Coach says, amen, the TV can definitely become a distraction and discipline is needed. That's right. We have to turn it off. I tell my kids, and I forgot to mention this, but I literally say to them, I say, um, why are you, hang on one second here. I say to them, 
why are you so bent on watching other people pursue and live out their dreams? Because when you're sitting there watching shows all day, what you're literally doing is like clapping, saying, yay, I'm so glad that you pursued your dreams and you're doing what you need to do. And you're sitting there on the sidelines, right? So you're looking at them live out their dreams and it's almost like you're clapping for them. I know that's weird, but that's how I talk to my kids. Even, they're adults now, but they say, mom, you say that all the time. So I said, that's what you're doing. You're sitting and clapping for them when you should be working on you. So I can never, it's hard for me to watch TV longer than even, if it's past 15 minutes, it's really hard for me because I'm always, you know, not that I can't relax watching it, but I just feel like it's just for me, not the best use of my time. But anyway, love you all. Love you, love you. Bye-bye. How do I end this one? Okay.